Your true self is always shining and free. Human beings make something and enter the ocean of suffering. It's getting really spooky around here. Hello everyone, how are you all doing? I'm heading off to a hike. It uh, feels like, I guess, what fall would feel like, for my idea of fall. <laughs> right now it's, uh, it's been cloudy every morning. I'm not sure if it's fox or cloud. And then around, I think nine or 10, maybe 11 a.m it becomes sunny again. I don't know if I have an announcement really. It's more of an invitation. Some of you know that every year, or except for the last few years because of the pandemic, I go to the Providence Zen Center during the winter. So every winter, January, February, March at the Providence Zen Center, they have a three month retreat. It's called a Kilche. I've sat many of those retreats at the Providence Zen Center. Um, since I've been teaching, I usually go for one week of those three months, usually the second week of the three month retreat. And it's a time for me to really focus on practice. So I do some teaching during that retreat. So I guess I would like to uh, invite you all, if you can come, if it's possible. It's going to be, I'll be there January 14th through the 21st. So that'll be the second week of the retreat. I'll put some information about the retreat down below. Another thing I want to mention is that um, if you have any ideas or if there's any kind of information or topics or instruction that would be helpful for you, let me know in the comments. You can also email me directly at jason at jasonquinzen.com. Uh, the whole idea of this project and this YouTube channel is to help support people in their practice, perhaps encourage people to practice, whether that's a daily practice, going to retreats, bringing practice into your lives. It's really kind of the essence of this whole project. So if there's something that you would like to see or something you think would be beneficial to yourself or to others, let me know in the comments what that would be. I, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna focus on driving. I'll see you when we get to the location. I haven't been there before, but I think it may be interesting. In the meantime, you can join me on the drive. It's definitely, like I said, foggy and cloudy, so take a look.
We made it. Check out this view. I'd have to say, I was not expecting that view. I'm not sure what I was expecting. We started off where the fog was above us, and then during the drive, we were driving through the fog. Now it looks like we're above the fog. Okay, so we are at Sierra Vista Open Space. No pets allowed, hmm. no drones, okay. Your true self is always shining and free. Human beings make something and enter the ocean of suffering. Only without thinking can you return to your true self. The high mountain is always blue. White clouds coming, going.
Whew. This is a killer. It's different from other hikes. Usually we start by going up and then go down. But since we drove to the top, we started walking down and now ending going up. <laughs> Go on, Simbosa. Definitely clearing up now. You can see the uh, town below there. Who's down there? What you doing down there? Well, that was pretty amazing and surprising, actually. I thought that when I drove to this hiking location that I would see the whole city, but all I saw was fog. And I, <laughs> when I got to the hike, I thought I had an idea about what I wanted to talk about. But after seeing that fog, I've changed my mind. I would like to share a little teaching from the poem I just read about our true self. Uh, if you skip that part, uh, it's in the uh, chapters there and you can go back and look at it. I remember reading this poem many, many, many years ago and it always struck me very deeply. In fact, I think I even wrote about it in my book. But the poem is by Zen Master Sung Song. And the first line is very interesting. It says that your true self is always shining and free. This is a wonderful teaching. And this is what made me think of the idea about talking about this is as I was driving over to the hike, we were, we could see kind of the fog above us. And then as we were going, almost getting there midway, a little bit past midway, we were actually in the fog at that time. And then when we got to the top where the hike started, we could see the fog below us. Just seeing that reminded me of this first line that our true self is always shining and free. It doesn't matter if the fog is above us or if we're in the fog or we can see the fog below. Our true self is always shining and free. And this is the good news for all of us. What it means that our enlightened nature, our true self, is something that we always have. It's already here. Nobody can give it to us. And also, nobody can take it away. The next line in the poem says that human beings make something and enter the ocean of suffering. So it all starts from us making something. So what is making something? If you watch my videos, I talk about our, what our job is in meditation practice and our Zen practice and in our lives is to see truth. Seeing truth is just seeing, just hearing, just perceiving this moment very clearly. I saw a picture of the hike I was going to go on and I saw that you can see the whole city and I thought that's going to be amazing, right? So I already made something. I made uh, this idea about what's going to happen when I get to the top. So when I got to the top to start the hike, all I saw was fog. So I was a little disappointed because I made something. And then I made something again, right? The truth was it was foggy. Then I was, ah, this is not good. 
<laughs> but then I was like, I let go of it and saw that, wow, this fog is very beautiful. We have a very interesting teaching in Zen practice about if you make something, don't attach to it. If you attach to something, don't check it. If you check something, don't hold it. Holding is what kills us. Holding is what causes suffering for ourselves and everyone around us. Last week, I was having a very, I guess you would call a bad day. <laughs> um, I wasn't getting much sleep and I was very busy doing a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, my energy was up. And I was picking up my kids from school and on the way there, I was at a light and the light was green and I wanted to turn right. But there was these people walking across the crosswalk very slowly. So that's the truth, right? People are walking very slowly. But I made it bad because I'm trying to get somewhere. And I wasn't in the crosswalk, but I kind of inched up a little bit more, you know, very restless, right? Energy's up. I don't like these people walking slowly. And there was this person kind of pointing to me, like, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> and then my energy went way up, right? So once they crossed the crosswalk, I turned, rolled down the window and said, I wasn't even in the crosswalk. <laughs> then I continued. And I realized that, wow, where did that come from, right? So this is the meaning of making something. If we make something, don't attach to it. So attachment means putting energy into what we are making. So these people are walking very slowly. That's the truth. I was making it bad. <laughs> I was making it slow. I was making it, I need to go now. So that's putting energy into what we're making. So usually our energy goes up. I got very angry and then there was a result. So we all do that. We make something, we attach to something. So if we do that, don't check. So after I was driving, I was like, wow, where did that come from? Why did I do that? I'm supposed to be a teacher, a Zen teacher. What kind of teaching is that? <laughs> That's called checking, right? I like, I don't like, I'm doing good, I'm doing bad. This person's good, this person's bad. This checking world just causes more and more suffering for ourselves. So as I got to my kid's school, I noticed that now I'm checking. So I made something, I attached to something, now I'm checking something. And the most important is, do we hold on to it? And really this is where our Zen practice starts, is let go. Because we don't let go, whatever we're expressing inside, whether it's anger, for me it was anger at that time, whether it's fear, whether it's sadness, if we're holding this, then we really get into this deep ocean of suffering as described in this poem. When I noticed that I was checking, I decided to let go. And really, this is the most important part of our practice is, first of all, our practice helps us not to hold anything. If you don't hold anything, then you can see you're checking very clearly. Then just return to this moment. What's happening right now? What is my job right now in this moment? So when I got to my kid's school, I was like, all right, my job is to get out of the car, go walk to the school and meet my daughter in the front. If we're holding, then our attachment gets stronger, our checking gets stronger, and then we enter what we call samsara. It's this cycle, this wheel of suffering that goes around and around and around, and we share it with everybody that's around us. So our practice is very clear. If you make something, don't put energy into it. That means don't attach to it. If you notice that you're attached to something, don't check yourself. <laughs>
don't check other people. And if you perceive that you are checking, don't hold. And that's the choice we have in any moment, is just to let go. Because if we can let go of holding, then we can let go of our checking. Then we put our energy into what we're doing now, so now we're no longer attaching. Then this moment becomes clear. What is my job right now in this moment? Coming back to the poem, only without thinking we can return to our true self. So that means if we are making something, putting energy into that, that means attaching to it, then just return your focus to what's happening right now. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you perceive right now? And how do I respond to what is appearing? Then we already return to our true self, but I'm not even sure if that's the right word. Because the beginning says our true self is always shining and free. It's already here. So just letting go of our attachment, that just means directing our energy into this moment. Our true self already appears. Sometimes when people read this line only without thinking, they think that they shouldn't have any thinking. What it means is don't attach to your thinking. Thinking comes and goes. We either put our energy into our thinking, we check our thinking, or we hold our thinking. So this meaning is just to let go of our thinking right now in this moment. The last lines are pretty interesting. So when we let go of our thinking, then our true self appears. The high mountain is always blue. White clouds coming and going. That means we come back to everything is complete as it is in this moment. So if I look up, sky is blue. That's not good. That's not bad. That's not right. That's not wrong. Wind blowing through the trees. That's not good. That's not bad. That's not right. That's not wrong. So when we start to see everything as truth, it can really help us with this making, attaching, checking, and holding. Because if we see that we're doing any of these things, they're just the truth. It's not good. It's not bad. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's just what it is. So when it appears, then what? Just return to what's happening right now. And how can it help? It's actually quite very simple. But a lot of us have very strong karma, which means we have very strong habitual thoughts. That is why we have a daily practice. That is why we practice together. That is why we go to retreats, to help us respond to what's appearing. So it doesn't matter if you're making, checking, attaching, holding, any of those things. Right now, wake up. Those are my thoughts for the day. Let me know what you think about all of this. Also, let me know how I can support you or if there's any kind of content that you think can help your practice or can help other people. Let me know in the comments about that as well. All right, everyone. I will see you very soon.